So we're starting to see some of the questions that we're going to see on Macy test. Um, and I think for the whole group, Florida Ranch and East Hall, I think we need to all figure out how to go deeper, but also how to, how to read the prompt. Um, one of the things that I've talked to my students about, and I know Mr. Hardison and I have talked, I'm coming back to one group and not to the other, sorry. Um, that we've talked about is, you guys are the creme de la creme. You're the, you're the top kids. And for a lot of you, you write without thought necessarily because you haven't had to do that before because it comes more easily to you. Whereas, say, a lower level student might have to make sure they do all their pre-writing. For both groups, just a show of hands, how many of you still pre-write? Like, you legitimately pre-write when you're not asked to. <laughs> Brainstorming, webbing, pre-writing, idea forming. Show me those hands again. I'll tell her the count. We have about three and a half here. Okay. I, I think that that's a problem. I think that a lot of you don't realize the significance, because probably you're, I mean, I know that I'm speaking for my students and for myself, once you understand how to write, those webs or whatever you did in middle school, you don't have to do anymore because you already know how to, or you think you know how to put it together. And what I was telling Mr. Hartson is I'm concerned that that is 15 minutes you get to look at the prompts, y'all are going to know what to, you're not going to make good use of that time. And I, like I said, I'm talking for my students. And the problem I see is you have 120 minutes to write three essays, and the time is what's going to hurt. In fact, I was talking with another teacher who saw you like before, and she said, I don't care how good you are, 40 minutes to knock out three essays, that's not nice. There's no college class that's going to ever ask you to do that. So I think for the time allotment, it would be in your best interest to do that. Okay. That person had planned the entire essay as much as they planned the beginning, and the whole essay would have been great. And I think that that is very important, and I was noticing that across the board, that it seemed to fizzle. Well, I think I would agree. And hey, quick uh, quick moment to interject that we'll have that polished Excel spreadsheet in about two days. I have one more student doing some makeup, so we should be done in a couple of days, and I'll polish it and send it to you. Okay. Um, can I, I hold my class as a quick kind of show of hands or um, them just answering in, informally, but did your students, did y'all find it effective? Were you offended? Did you think it was good? Honestly. <laughs> And can we go to the back channel with uh, more communication? We can go one at a time verbally here. Anybody want to come up to the camera and kind of talk about the spreadsheet and what you thought about that? All right, here we go. Speak for the class. You're always the first one. Would you guys like to speak represent? Yes. Go ahead. All right. Here you can sit on my lap. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Hey, guys. What's up? It's Andy. Nice to see you guys again. Do what? Are you our artist? Uh, yeah, I'm one of the rappers in here. I guess you can put it that way. Um, Aaliyah's the other one. Oh, she, she doesn't want to be called out right now. But, um, okay, so I'm just going to first speak on my essay. My essay, um, I'm one of the people that has to write down, like, what they're going to go through. Because it's, I start making thoughts and something about the way I think. If I don't write them down, I'll forget the thought or I'll lose the way that I originally wrote it. And, for example, with rap, I'm a lyricist, so I like to word things certain ways. So yeah. if I don't write it down the way that it came to me, then I'll lose some meaning in the process. So that's why I like to write my things down. And um, I actually, for my essay that I actually wrote, it wasn't that good because I, I saw irony and... It was supposed to be satire. So I was like, I second-guessed my actual thought process, and I was like, that's very ironic to me. And I didn't throw it in as satire. So I wrote, I was slow to start, and then time got to me. So I didn't write a very good essay. But speaking for the rest of my class, I don't know what it's all on the back channel. Um, some of, I do know that some of us were a bit not offended necessarily, per se, but... Um, <laughs> Some of the things written on there, we some some people wrote really well. Like I actually wanted to lift up someone that criticized Lucas's essay, 
We were all, of course, numbers, but someone criticizes very well. It's very good constructive criticism. But, but, but some, some people did, I'm not going to lie, I don't know who was who, so there was a few comments on there that um, didn't necessarily construct, that it wasn't constructive criticism, it was kind of like tearing down, and it wasn't really good for the whole situation. So, yeah. And I don't know if y'all, if anyone wants to come up and speak to us about the way we spoke on y'all's essays, that'd be great. And whose number was what? Um, Guys, and you can go back. That link is still available. Uh, one sec, while I believe we it's still it available. <laughs> one second. I don't want to call anyone out, but we're gonna be transparent here, and we're fixing to do that. Okay, one oh, second. Well, no, oh no, yeah. But, I can say well, all right, come on so up, Krista. Come on up. Okay. Well, I know when. Oh, I'm Krista, by the way. Hi, guys. Okay. So I know when we were um, like critiquing ours, we kind of worked with each other, and even if the essay wasn't like as good as it could have been, we always tried mm -hmm. to say like, you did this really well, but you could have done this to make it better. And I feel like some of our like the critiques we received were like this was terrible. You shouldn't have even done that. And like that was all we got. So I feel like if you like put it how you what you wanted to say in like a nicer way and said here's how to improve, then it wouldn't have been as bad. But I know like some people were really upset because they were like, well you just told me basically I shouldn't have taken this class instead of saying this is what you should be doing. So. Yeah. It's not the fact that they said like terrible things. It was just the fact that they didn't say how to improve. Yeah, yeah. Well, how to improve. Um, you gotta look into that. Oh. Okay. Um, I I agree with you, Krista. I mean, I feel like when I was to like review someone's essay, I would rather like sandwich it and give you what I feel like was you know kind of not too good to criticize, and then stuff it with like, well, this is how you can improve, and then end with like another, you know, well, at least you did this well. So I feel like maybe we should have, some of us probably should have thought about how to improve instead of just criticize the whole time. But I agree, and I love my peer editor. Person. I was one of six, just to let you know. <laughs> hey, I've got to disagree with you just a little bit because I was kind of upset that somebody kind of sugarcoated mine and they gave me a really awful grade and I was like, wait, so where's the criticism? So I, I actually like the criticism because it helps me become a better writer. It helps me see what I do wrong when I did right. So I kind of criticized a little bit, not as bad as somebody in here, but <laughs> but I I said what you did wrong and how you can improve it instead of being like this is all you did right and you got a three. Good job. I didn't really like it. Oh, well, I wasn't saying, like, just tell them what they did good, because, I mean, I know our, like, our page was set up, like, what's the strongest point of the essay, and then, like, what's the what was the point? weakest point, and I feel like, even, there was, the even, even the strongest point, people were like, you did terrible, you shouldn't have done this, instead of saying, you know, I really like this part, but, you know, blah, 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 instead of telling someone, like, you're terrible. Don't ever take this class again. Like we're we're all for criticizing. It's great because it helps you learn. But we also some not everyone, but some people were a little too mean. Yeah. But there's still like a borderline where like don't be too nice, don't be too mean. Just tell them what they can do. Is this 217? But okay. I can tell you, um, I can tell you both of you, thank you for your honesty and your bravery for getting up because I know that that's difficult to do to, you know, you're talking to a room and you can barely see their faces. So I, I, we appreciate that. I can tell you in our class, we did talk a lot about how you to receive feedback and how you should give feedback. Um, and I think that may be what Chris is referring to. I might be wrong, but, um, you know, the idea of tagging. If you want to see what you're saying, hang it up, you should have never been in the class. No, so we wouldn't want to give that same kind of feedback. So. Hey, Miss Ramsey, I want to say from a teacher standpoint, what I see as a success is as we're doing this and uh, students are struggling with what to score and what to say, because that's a pretty good 
survey on the Google Forms that we use. I get to talk with students as they're reading the paragraphs and reading the essays, and the dialogue that I have as I'm walking around just seems to really show a lot of improvement. Now, you know, they may go score to three and somebody else scores at a five or a six, but to me, that's where we look back at the data and we get those two students together and kind of make sure we know that, you know, what a five is or what a six is versus a two or a three. So to me, it's going to show any errors and we also get that dialogue as we walk. Even be remotely capable of making a valid point. No offense, but I would stop taking AP classes. Um, I agree. That is not, that's not, I'm not calling people out, but that wasn't, that wasn't this class, but I know these numbers. Okay. Um, but again, I'm not trying to play this blame. You're right. No, that, there was nothing redeeming about that, so. Coach of the Gilmore. Yeah, and I mean, the beginning was fine. Even the beginning was fine. It was just that last comment, like, no yeah. offense, but I would stop taking AP classes. Okay, I so, and this is, I really, really like this one. This isn't my paper that was being criticized, but I feel like this is, was very constructive, and in fact, I felt like the person was analyzing what um, my friend Luke is here wrote. It says, please, this is, this is 109, by the way. I'm pretty sure this is one of you guys. You're awesome. I love this, man. It says, really? I think this is really good. Listen, please validate the overall clarity and strength of this sentence. That's my job as your reviewer. And as your reviewer, I can say through the safety of anonymity, anonymity, <laughs> anonymity, that your words, while strong, do not form a clear thought. In layman's terms, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Wilson, like Twain, has ascended above his topic. The reference to Mark Twain doesn't really apply and is never addressed again, nor further explained in the essay. I discredit this to your lack of time to write an understandably difficult paper. On another note, I cannot deduce why you chose to put the word very in quotation marks. It's not a quote, and from what I understand, you're not being sarcastic. So I do not understand why you chose to do that. Regardless, it's never a very good idea to use the word very in an essay anyways, as that's just lazy writing. So I mean, there was, you know, cr criticizing, but I feel like there was some, some learning there. And, as opposed to that. Guys, will y'all be ready for that AP prompt well, in just a second? I mean, I just kind of wrote in a way I like to be talked to. I'm a very sarcastic person, but I also like being told when I'm wrong. Like, I like it when people just call me out on my crap sometimes. So, like, I, I felt like I was being mean, and when you guys were saying that somebody was being mean, I was worried that was me. So I'm glad you appreciated it, I guess. I did. I don't, I don't know how Lucas felt about it. I was, I, I'm an um, I was on, on the side. Here. Okay, and... Well, I don't know if I agree. I probably do. I don't remember what I wrote. Um, <laughs> yeah, do I. It's cool. Yeah. Well, thank you, though. I mean, it, it helped me. It's good. Okay. Sweet. Hey, let's, uh, let's attack that prompt. What do you think, Miss Ramsey? That sounds good. Sorry, I'm... Guys, everybody on that tab, our 2012 prompt. We're not going to have time to read the whole thing, but if you want to read it, we'll figure out Guys, make sure you write here. What do we need to attack? Because as you guys said earlier, um, you know, some of you saw iron. You saw lots of different things in Twain's writing, but you didn't necessarily answer the prompt, which was <laughs> <that's> weird. <laughs> um, you didn't answer the prompt because some of us missed satire. Some of us missed the satire. Some of us missed the satire. Some of us missed the satire. So if we miss the prompt, my understanding is automatically your grade on the AP test doesn't matter how great your writing is. So let's look at the prompt in both groups, and then if y'all want to start either coming up one by one or putting it on the back channel, what you would do with it, what you think needs to be attacked. Okay. All right, you want to read the prompt together? Sure. All right. Oh, well, corny. I, I can read the prompt in someone okay. wants to read that. Go ahead, Connor, you read it. What? Read that one out. Am I loud enough? Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Um, <laughs> April 10th, 1962, as the United States was emerging from a recession, the nation's largest steel companies raised steel prices by 3.5%. President John F. Kennedy, who has repeatedly called for stable prices and wages as part of, it, of a program of national sacrifice during a period of economic distress, of a news conference on April 11, 1962, which he opened with a thoughtful commentary regarding the hike in steel prices. 
We can these remarks carefully, then write an essay in which you analyze the rhetorical strategy President Kennedy uses to achieve its purpose, support your analysis with specific references to the text. 